with Project Tree Collard in Grass Valley, California to talk to you about how to protect your tree collard at the time of planting from gophers. So one wonderful intervention, it doesn't take too long and it's not too complicated and doesn't have too many materials that you need to build your own gopher cage. They sell these commercially and they're very expensive. So if you're planting a bunch of tree collards and trying to get a food forest going and you have gophers, it's gonna really get very expensive very quickly at a large cost, I think something like six or even seven dollars onto each plant. And all you need is some inexpensive chicken wire, um, some kind of wire cutter. I really like these tin snips for a lot of different farm projects. Gloves and a tape measure. So I'm gonna show you how to make a wire basket to protect the root ball of your tree collard. Your tree collard may be very small when you get it and are planting it, but over time it's gonna have a very large root ball and you wanna protect that main root ball of your plant so that later in time when the gophers come and they start nibbling, they're just gonna get some of the side roots so they're not gonna get the heart of the root ball of your tree collard. Um, so tree collards are quite an investment in growing them well and they're perennial so they're very long-lived and you just want to make sure that that's protected from something like a gopher because that could be very disappointing if they just come and wipe it out at any point in time. So this is three foot chicken wire and it's just what I had around. Um, very often it's great to use something to weight this down so it doesn't curl up. The, all these edges are sharp. So in this case, I can just see what's on hand. The pile of old wood here. I'm gonna use some of that to weight this down while I'm cutting. So here I've got it propped up on both sides to kind of take the pressure off while I cut the wire. I find these cut best one at a time. All right, so I don't know if you notice how that sprung up at the end. You don't want to be wearing a tank top and no gloves when that happens. So I'm trying to do a close up here of the, the honeycombs and how I have wire sticking out on the edges that I can bend in on itself. Now, for me, the next step is gonna be cutting this in half. So I'm gonna get two baskets out of my three foot chicken wire. So again, I'm going to measure and half of three feet is one and a half feet, 18 inches. And again, this is approximate. It's not like the roots are gonna say, hey, we, we won't be okay with a 16 inch basket or, you know, they're gonna be grateful to be protected from any gopher. So these are the halves. Okay, so we have three sharp edges, you know, cut by me. The, we want the factory cut and finished edge to be on top of the, the hole, the planting hole. So just something to keep in mind as you're doing this. So first I'm gonna connect the sides. So I'm taking um, these very small flanges and tucking them in behind the wire. And this, this is very uh, easy. It's just, again, gotta wear gloves. And I'm saying this a lot of times because a lot of times I just, I'm too lazy to go get the gloves and I end up cut. So, and this is with all kinds of homesteading projects, not just building gopher cages, but it's always good to get your eye protection as needed for projects and your glove protection. So now I have a nice circle here. And 
that seam is there. Now I'm going to squish it opposite the seam. So the seam's coming up one side and it's kind of in the middle. And now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. It's a little harder to do this because it's just not as much wire to bend through, but it's working nonetheless. So I do that across the bottom. And my technique is not the prettiest gopher cage out there. There are other YouTubers with prettier looking gopher cages and go for it. The main thing is, is you want at least a foot of depth, but preferably more for your tree collared plant. So some people have a video where you end up with a beautiful, very well crafted, smaller, shallower cage or whatever. I like, I think that the depth on this is really important for something long lived like a tree collared. I can actually plant straight in there as is, kind of when I get it in my digging hole, kind of do that. Or I can kind of fold these in. So when I measure, that's about a 16 inch um, basket. I'll probably have it sticking up about two inches from the ground. So that's great. All right, so I'm going to plant the next dinosaur tree collard. I've planted two in their gopher baskets just now. Because I'm in an established garden, I want to keep my work site pretty neat. And so I can tell where the true soil level is. If I put the soil next to the hole, I might get confused about how much the gopher cage needs to stick up. So the hole's looking pretty good. We'll test it out. sticking up about two inches, which is just about perfect. Here we have a very high level of magnesium in the soil and the deficiency of calcium. So I'm gonna mix some gypsum, which is one of the more readily available forms of calcium into these containers of soil. Just hoping it gets mixed in throughout, but I might have to add some more. I'm going to go ahead and take these. They're a bit heavy at first, but try to direct it slowly. And you don't want to just fill the outside first like I am. You want to get it on the inside so that your cage doesn't collapse. And the dirt does move freely in and out of those honeycombs. The brassica family, when you eat them, they're very high in calcium, and that's because they pull it out of the soil, so you really need to replenish your soils unless you live in a place that has naturally a really great ratio of magnesium and calcium. And then you don't need to amend with those. So these were dinosaur tree collards that was growing for selling on Project Tree Collard, but they got attacked by a pest when I was moving my greenhouse. They just didn't look that great because they got a lot of damage from the pest and holes in the leaves. I decided to plant them here. So I'm peeling back the paper, pulp paper pot that they came in. And there's the roots. And I'm going to keep the soil level the same. So what it was in the container is what it will be in the ground. You don't want to bury it deeper or you don't want to have it sticking up and exposed. And there you have it. So
So uh, I will be doing drip irrigation or tea tape here. And then after that, I will be mulching the soil with straw, rice straw. And you won't see the gopher cage at all at that point. But if the gopher is digging, let's say here, and unable to get in the cage to get to the plant's roots, it may come up over the top and just sticking up a bit. This one maybe not quite sticking up enough, but you want about two inches. I hope you enjoyed this video and feel more confident in planting your tree collards when you have gophers around like I do. And for more information, you can go to projecttreecollar.org where we, where we sell plants and cuttings and seeds and we're actively breeding new varieties and trying things out over the years before we can offer them to the public. And please hit the subscribe button. It encourages me to make more videos and share more information with you folks. Thanks for watching.